Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Now today I'm going to be reviewing an album what today celebrates its 30th anniversary. I'm going to be reviewing Ken Smith's classic album The Queen Is Dead. So in this video I will give a bit of background information about the album, then I will show you the vinyl copy of it what I have here, um, and then go over each of the album songs as well. So this album um, was released um, 30 years ago today, on the 16th of June, back in 1986. Um, the Smith's previous al album to this was called, um, was called Meet Is Murder, and that was quite a successful album, reaching number one in the UK albums charts. They were a, quite a popular band in like the UK like around that time. However, um, their popularity was kind of it was like it was like hit and miss like really with like the Smiths, um, um, because like the follow-up single to to the album Meet Is Murder was like a standalone single. It was a song called Shakespeare's Sister, and that um, failed to crack the UK top twenty. What was sig um, um, what was significantly worse than like many of their um, their earlier singles. Also, the sole single from the album Meet Is Murder, that joke isn't funny anymore, and um, failed to crack the UK top forty. And this caused a little bit of anger out like, within the Smiths. Um, Morrissey um, was quick to blame like the record company, what they were on Rough Trade Records, um, for not giving the band enough promotion. And like there was speculation that like they might be um, changing um, over to the major label EMI. So the album was recorded towards the end of 1985 with engineer Stephen Street, and like it was delayed for eight months because of this ongoing dispute between the Smiths and Rough Trade Records. Basically, what came of that was Rough Trade took out an injunction which um, prevented the Smiths um, leaving to go on to like um, a major label such as EMI. There's also tensions within the band at this point in time. Um, the bassist Andy Rook had been exposed as a heroin addict, which really like upset Morrissey, who was very like, anti-drugs, and like he was actually temporarily sacked from the band. He was replaced by a guy called Craig Gannon, um, but like he was later though, like Andy Burke was like later reinstated um, about a couple weeks after and um, 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 right back on bass, but they retained Craig Gannon for live performances to really beef up their sound and like because Johnny Moore was overdubbing like, um, about, like so many different like guitar parts so it was getting hard to perform these songs live. But, like, upon release, the album received unanimous critical acclaim, and like it is seen as one of the defining albums of the 1980s. But, like its popularity over the years has endured, as in 2013 it was ranked by Enemy as the greatest album of all time. But, like, upon release, the album reached number two in the UK charts, but only number 70 in the US charts. They were never met very big in like America like anyway and like this is like just when they were about to really like break through but like it never quite happened for the Smiths. So anyway I'll now just show you the vinyl copy I have here. I'm keeping it in like a new Blake sleeve what I recently purchased and um, um, well not just one Blake sleeve I bought I, well I bought about 50 of them and like they're pretty good sleeves actually and um, they do make the records look a lot nicer than like the slightly baggy or slightly thinner and um, 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 polythene ones that I've been using before but anyway here's the cover got a plain back cover and we have the gatefold here which is just the lyrics on one side and the very iconic pitch of them there outside um, Salford Lads Club. Um, in here we have the inner sleeve. This is a original British copy by the way given to me by my uncle who was a massive Smiths fan and like, I'm quite grateful that he gave me like these ones here because this is quite a hard album to get now like unless like you do opt for like the reissue which is probably what I would do like I'd say get like the reissue because I'm sure it's like a lovely pressing but it's, it's nice to have the original one like as it came out back in 1986. Right, so now I'm going to go over all of the album songs. I will score each track out of 10 and then those will be used to give us a overall percentage for the album. So it opens up with the title song The Queen Is Dead and I'm giving this an 8 out of 10. Um, starts off with like a extract from like a song um, Take Me Take Me Back to Dear Old Blighty from like an old um, British film that Morrissey was like a big fan of like these old these older films from like um, um, the 1950s and 60s and like it's sort of like um, a throwback to like um, um, slightly better times than like the 1980s were and like it sort of contrasted then the drums kick in fantastic in, in, in introduction to this song just like um that drum fill it just kicks it off it just sets the album off on like such a great trajectory um, and like the actual song itself is, is like a really hard rocking song probably one of like the hardest rocking ones this ever recorded 
and it is some fantastic guitar playing, lots of like overdubs. You can tell that like Johnny Marr really put in like a lot of effort in like recording like this one here. How 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 however for me, um it is a song where like I was kinda like on 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 like the fence with. Like I liked it, but it was never really one of like my favourite Smith songs. Like and it has like grown on me like a little bit, but like it I I still wouldn't say it's like a huge favourite of mine. It's a slightly forgettable one, there's not much of like a melody to it, but it is a good track though, like it's a great band performance they put in like on the song, so that's why I'd be giving it an eight out of ten. Now, the second song is called Frankly Mr. Shankly, and I'm giving this a 10 out of 10. I absolutely love this one. It is a great, fun little song done in like a sort of like a more sort of traditional music hall style, um, sort of like George Formby esque sort of song. Um, lyrics, I love the lyrics of this one. It's all about a person who's like fed up like with their job, like and wanted to go on and do better things with their life, and like, um, like, I want to leave, you will not miss me, I'm going to go down in musical history, is like one of like, the lyrics from the songs. But supposedly this song is like aimed at the head of Rough Trade Records, like at this time, a guy called um, Jeff Travis, who like, um, supposedly like, um, 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 try and like make amends with Morrissey, um, said that like he wrote poetry, and like the line in this song, um, I, I, di I, I didn't realise that you wrote poetry, I didn't realise that you wrote, wrote so bloody awful poetry. It's sort of like, it's all I could dig it in. And like, but he found like the funny side like with like the song. Um, and like that guitar break about one minute in is just amazing. Um, little fact with this one here, what I read on like the internet. So I'm not too sure like how accurate it is. But apparently Linda McCartney, yes, from Wings, was offered to play piano like on this song here. Probably because of like their sort of like um their similar views towards like issues like vegetarianism and that how however she declined the offer. Um there's no piano like on this song anyway, so like I don't know how 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 like it would have like fitted in like with like the song. But I think it is just a great great track and like a ten out of ten for me. Next one is called I Know It's Over, and um, giving this an 8 out of 10, this is a much more slower, more sort of soulful number almost. Starts very bare like arrangement, just like Morris is singing, the drums and like a um, couple of bass notes here and there. But then it does pick up and like it's a very sort of vulnerable lyric and like a great vocal delivery from Morrissey. Um, me personally, I can never used to really like these sort of like these slower Smith songs, stuff like this and um, um, stuff like I know it's over and um, that joke isn't funny anymore. A um, couple of like um, well, a couple of of, of like others were on like the best of CD. I, f I felt that those are like the weakest songs, and this um, well, I won't say that like this is like one of like, my absolute favourites, but but it is a good good song. Um, for me though, it does get like a little bit drawn out towards the end with like, he's sort of like repeating that line, um, Mother, I can feel the soil falling over my head, which is a good line, but it kind of just drags on a little bit um, too much for me and like they could have like faded it out a little bit sooner. But like overall, a pretty good album cut. When you walk without and then the next one is called Never Had No One Ever, which I'm giving a 5 out of 10 to. Now, I, I, now like, I think that that is, like, a little bit um, too harsh, and, like, it possibly is, is but I think um, coming after I Know It's Over, which is, once again, like, a very, sort of, slower song, this is done in, in like, a very, sort of, similar style, and, and like, it kind of drags out side one a little bit for me. Um, the actual lyrical content, it is just, like, one verse, but the actual musical track, like, goes on for about three minutes, and it kind of drags on a little bit, like, despite it not being a very long song, it just doesn't really go anywhere. And, like, it's very much in, in like, a similar style to, like, the last song. Well, I think this could have worked, like, a little bit better if it had actually been tagged on the end of, like, I Know It's Over. Because they do share, like, very similar sort of musical styles and, like, lyrical themes, like, as well. So if, like, they maybe sort of cross-faded, like, these two songs or maybe tried to join them up in, like, some way, um, maybe, like, it would have meant that, like, I Know It's Over wouldn't have been as, 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 like, dragged out as much. And then this song here, like, wouldn't be, like, an actual, like, individual track, if, like, you get what I'm saying. So, yeah, like, it's not my favourite song from the album. It is, it is, for me, the weakest song on the album. And, like, somewhat lets side one down. Down a little bit. Next one up though is called Cemetery Gates, which closes side one, and I'm giving this a nine out of ten. I do really like this one here, and um, and um, there is like some really nice sort of like um, guitar bits in it. What I love, and um, strange subject for like a song like Cemetery Gates. And like it's like, but like the actual music though is like much more upbeat than like its title like would um well, like would suggest. Very um, 
very like sort of like obscure sort of like typical like, modesty lyrics. Me, I, me like I don't, I'm not too sure like, what they're about. I sort of get it like the and and well, like then like the cemetery, they're sort of like reflecting on like the people's lives who have like died and that. So like yeah, like isn't like maybe like the most like uplifting song, but what Smith song is really? And um, but it is a good track. But like the actual music is like really, really, really good. So like I give this song a nine out of ten. But now I take that back about like and um, what Smith songs are like uplifting because the opener to side two definitely is a song called Big Mad Strikes Again and I'm giving this a 10 out of 10 and um, just sort of starts off with like um, this like fantastic like acoustic guitar very very fast fastly played it just sounds absolutely awesome and um, Johnny Morrison like he wrote this one and um, intentionally like as a single sort of trying to like imitate like um, the Rolling Stones that like, Jumpin' Jack Flash sort of with like a catchy riff or like um, would stick in people's heads um, and I, 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 I think it's just a fantastic song because I've got some really creative like guitar bits like from Johnny Moore and like a fantastic um, great um, tight band performance they really um, sound like they're having like a lot of fun like um, um, while like performing this song so yeah it is just fantastic Back. And then we get what was the first single released from the album and um, back in September 1985 It's a song called The Boy With The Thorn In His Side Also giving this a 10 out of 10 Just another fantastic song um, lyrics on this one are sort of about like the music industry um, about like, not giving like um, performers like a chance to like sort of like express themselves sort of like um, um, Morrissey getting like his um, anger at like the rough trade dispute like what was like going on like around like the time what the single came out about like when it was like released it reached number 23 in the UK singles charts and, 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 and like it has a fantastic b-side as well the single like on the 12 inch um, two songs um, Rubber Ring and Asleep is fantastic b-side um, so like yeah, I could definitely like, check out like those two songs because they're both fantastic. Um, almost like as good as like this A side, but it is like a classic Smith song. So yeah, um, boy with the thought in his side, a ten out of ten for me. Let me get one of the Smiths most light-hearted and fun songs is a song called Vicar in a Tutu and I'm giving this an 8 out of 10. Just a great great song, sort of like a rockabilly, sort of 1950s style like um, sort of like um, Johnny Moore sort of trying to um, um, like imitate and um, um, like Scotty Moore like El Elvis Presley's guitarist. So sort of like lyrics of this really like about like sort of like accepting people for like what like they are really like sort of like he's a vicar of tutu he's not strange he just wants to live his life that way. Those sort of like lyrics I I do really love this one here and um, it has grown in me like quite a bit and like it is now like I could possibly be giving this song like a nine out of ten but I think I'll just stick like with an eight because it isn't like one of like their finest like compositions but it is just like a bit of fun and like, but, like and does bring that sort of like that lightness to like what would be like a rather slightly darker album. And now the penultimate song is a absolute classic track and there is a light that never goes out. No surprises, I'm giving this a 10 out of 10. Really one of their most popular, most enduring songs, despite not being released like as a single like on release. Um, I think this was like issued in, in like the early 90s to promote like some greatest hits release and like um like, and, like managed to crack like the UK top 10. Lyrics on this one here are like really interesting, they sort of deal with like a lot of themes sort of like um um quite like romantic lyrics, I mean in like some way sort of take me out tonight or like on a date and that. But yeah, but then there's also like alienation from like your parents so that it's not my home, it's their home and I welcome no more at like that line. But it's also quite uh, morbid as well, like if like a double decker bus crashes into us and um, to die by your side um, is such a heavenly way to die. But I just love the song, the arrangement is just so great. It is such like an anthemic song, like when like you see like like, like Johnny Moore and like Morrissey you like performing this live, the crowd just sing along, they know every single word to this. It is just a fantastic um, classic song. That great string arrangement to like this song, what really like adds to like um, the whole like atmosphere like off like the track for me. Like I believe um, like all played by Johnny Moore like on a synthesizer. Really one of like the greatest songs from like the 80s and possibly one of the greatest songs of all time. It is it is a fantastic song. And then we close with a track called Some Girls Are Bigger Than Others, which I'm giving a 9 out of 10 to. I love the music to this track, I'll just start by saying that that guitar intro I could literally listen to like on a loop for hours and hours. It is so melodic, so 
brilliantly put together. Like, I certainly think that it is one of Johnny Moore's greatest um, 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 guitar pieces that what like, he's um, like, um, composed. However, um, the lyrics what Morrissey brings to this song are kind of poor, um, and like um, certainly like going by like, what I've read on um, um, like online, um, Johnny Moore felt like the lyrics done this song um, a bit of like a disservice, really, because that's like an interesting thing with like the way like they work like they never actually really like wrote together like they always um, would like Johnny Moore would come up with like a guitar piece or like a tune or something, then like Morrissey separately would like put words to it. So it was like a really like interesting way of working, and like you would get like these sort of songs here where like they're trying to go in in like slightly different directions but despite that it is a fantastic song great production from like Stephen Street I love the introduction where it's sort of like it comes in then it fades back out and they go what's happened here but then it just comes back in again it's just a really sort of novel way of like starting um this song here and like it is like a good decent closer to the album so like um so yeah I'd certainly say I really like that song <laughs> So overall, it would be a score of 87% for this album. Overall, I'd say side one is like pretty decent, but side two is just magical. We have three 10 out of 10 songs on it, um, and like, um, like a nine and like an eight out of 10. It is just an amazing side. Side two of this album is probably one of the best sides of like an album. It is just a couple of songs on like side one for me. Like I've never been a huge fan of like The Queen Is Dead, but, but it is grown on me, and I like, never had no one ever. It's kind of like, just like, okay. But it is a great album, this. So, like I say, say like anything above an 85% is like a really terrific album. But it doesn't quite, for me, go into like the 90% for me, which are like real um, and consistent, like no filler albums. Well, like, certainly this is like the Smith's most consistent work. Has so many classic songs in it, and like and so like the odd like um, slightly down point is like more than like overridden by like um, the amount of great great songs in here. But I'd also just like to point out the incredible productivity like from the Smiths like um, during like 1986. Not only did they have this amazing album, but we also had the non-album album singles Ask and Panic, what were both amazing, uh, amazing songs. And like this really um, brought them back to like the forefront of like the British indie music scene. So, yeah, I hope you have enjoyed um, um, this review. Um, if like you have like any requests for like any other ones, please leave them down below in the comment section. And um, also what you think of like this truly amazing album as well. So yeah, I hope you have enjoyed and I will see you all next time. Goodbye. <laughs>